Good morning, welcome, and happy Mother's Day. Welcome to our very first online service of morning worship. My name's Matt. I'm here at St. Paul's, but I'm not, a, not alone. I've got a, a few other people with me. Uh, we've got Natalie and uh, Janet singing. We've got Jim over there on the piano. We've got Steve behind uh, the camera. And what we hope is that you won't just watch us worship, but that you will take part, uh, you and any children in your household. We hope that you will pray all the prayers, sing all the songs, and listen carefully, uh, and learn, uh, and grow uh, as God's word is read and taught. You know, I, I think it's amazing that we can worship God in this way. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says this. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Now, life's hard at the moment, isn't it? But God is good, so that if you love him, you can be sure that God is working out everything for your good, even now. We're going to begin with some uh, opening words of praise. When I say God is good, can you say all the time? And when I say all the time, you know what to say. God is good. So God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Let's do that one more time. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Now, we're going to uh, pray. So would you bow your heads? Let's pray. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a couple of songs now, praising our great and wonderful God. Would you please feel free to stand up at home if you'd like to. Let's sing.
the reasons we have confession in church every week is, is that we sin every week. We say and think and do things that displease God. Even if we stayed at home in complete isolation for months, there would still be many things we need God's forgiveness for. So we're going to have a time of confession. And we confess our sins knowing that God always forgives those who are truly sorry. When I say, Lord, be merciful, would you please respond, forgive us our sin. Lord, be merciful, forgive us our sin. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. If we are truly sorry and believe that Jesus died to save us, we can be sure of God's forgiveness. Because, as the Bible says, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. So let us pray. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. In a moment, we're going to sing again uh, two songs celebrating Jesus and the wonderful forgiveness and hope we have in him. Now, uh, usually at this point in the service, uh, I tell you about the collection, uh, but we can hardly send people round to every one of your, your houses. Uh, so, if you would like to make a donation, and we do still need money, uh, maybe you could contact the church office and ask how you might do that. But for now, let's stand and let's sing.
The reading is from Genesis 50, verses 15 to 21. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now, please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Romans 8, 28 to 30. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. A loving Father, we thank you for your word, the Bible. Please teach us, comfort us, and fill us with hope as we learn about your work in our lives. Amen. I'm going to make one uh, very simple point, and it's this. That God works out everything for the good of those who love him. And it comes straight from God's word, the Bible. So you know that you can trust it. Romans 8, verse 28 says, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And that's it. That's pretty much all I'm going to say. Because if we grasp the significance of what God is saying, it will give us great hope and great comfort. If you are a committed Christian, when you are stuck at home, bored, lonely, you can say, God is working in this for my good. When you are tired, anxious, stressed out, you can say to yourself, God is working in this for my good. When you're struggling to keep going at work, You can say to yourself, God is working at this, working in this for my good. When your home life is chaotic and your family are driving you mad, you can say to yourself, God is working in this for my good. When you're sick, maybe very sick, you can say to yourself, God is working in this for my good. Even Christians who are dying can say to themselves in their final moments, God is working in this for my good. And over and over again, the Bible gives us examples of God bringing good out of bad for those that love him. One of the most famous examples is Joseph. Now, Joseph's brothers hated him because he had a a dream that one day he would rule over them. And so they threw him into a pit and then sold him into slavery in Egypt. They then convinced his dad that a wild animal had killed him. Then Joseph was falsely accused of rape, and so he went to prison. Finally, after about 17 years of suffering, Joseph interprets the dream for Pharaoh. 
And Pharaoh rewards him by making him the second most powerful person in Egypt. Pharaoh puts Joseph in charge of all the food, just in time for a seven-year famine. The famine was so great that Joseph's family back home in Canaan were in serious danger of starving to death. But they didn't starve to death. Why did they not starve to death? Because God had spent the past 17 years putting Joseph into a position where he could help them. The point of the whole story is given in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Joseph says to his brothers, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Now this is the Old Testament equivalent of Romans 8.28. God works out everything for the good of those who love him, including all the suffering that Joseph and his father went through. And there are many other examples in the Bible of God bringing good out of bad. For example, there's Esther. Esther was forced to marry a Gentile king. And it was an awful thing to happen. So why did God let it happen? Well, it happened so that Esther, as queen, would be able to save her fellow Jews from a a wicked plot to exterminate them, to wipe them out. And she did save them. And in this way, God brought good out of her suffering. Uh, Then then there's Jonah. Now, children at home, and I hope hope there are children at home uh, watching this. This point's for you. Uh, What happened to Jonah when he was thrown into the sea? You know the answer, don't you? He was swallowed by a great big fish. Now, that that must have been awful. Can you imagine the smell? Oh, disgusting. But that big fish saved his life. And then God used that great big fish, some kind of great big fishy submarine, to get Jonah to the place where he needed to be so that he could tell the Ninevites what they needed to do to get saved. Then there's the Apostle Paul. Now, Paul was arrested for preaching the gospel, and it was terrible. And yet, being in prison gave him lots of opportunities to tell people the good news about Jesus. Listen to what Paul says in Philippians chapter 1. Reflecting on his his imprisonment, he says, Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. And as a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Then, of course, there's the supreme example of God bringing good out of bad. Jesus' death on the cross. Jesus' death on the cross was bad for him, wasn't it? but good for us, because if we trust and follow him, his death saves us. It makes us right with God. So we can be sure that Romans 8, 28 is true. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Whatever the future holds for us, it is part of God's good plan for those who know, love, trust, and obey him. But what does Paul mean when he says that God is at work for our good? Well, the good he is talking about isn't necessarily the kind of things we might think are good. Uh, For example, if you had to write down a list of five good things you really hope will happen to you over the coming weeks, I wonder what you might write down. Maybe your list would look something like this. Uh, One, I want us to stay safe and well. Two, I want us to be financially secure. Three, I want to see my family and friends again soon. Four, I want life to return to normal soon. Five, I want all the essentials, you know, bread, milk, pasta, loo rolls, and so on. These are the kind of good things we instinctively want. But what God promises is even better than that. When God promises 
to bring good out of bad, he's promising us something much better than these things. Romans 8, verse 28 says, Christians have been called according to his purpose. And what is his purpose for our lives? What is God's good plan for us if we love him? Well, verses 29 and 30 tell us what God's plan is. And it's basically like this. It's basically this, to make you more and more like Jesus and to get you to heaven. God is constantly at work in your life to make you more and more like Jesus and get you to heaven. That's why Jesus died on the cross for you, to make you more like Jesus and get you to heaven. That's why God's given you the Holy Spirit, to make you more like Jesus and get you to heaven. That's God's aim for you, even now, to make you more like Jesus and get you to heaven. And when we do finally get to heaven, we will all be like Jesus I will still be me, and you will still be you, but we will be like Jesus in many ways. Perfectly kind and gentle, perfectly loving and good. All of the fruits of the Spirit will be perfected in us. So Romans 8, 28 doesn't mean that only nice things will happen to you, but it does mean that everything will ultimately work out for your good. He will make you more like Jesus and get you to heaven. Now, I saw an example, a really good example of this recently on Facebook. A friend posted on Facebook, I've just bought a box of 15 eggs. Never felt happier. I think one of the the effects of the coronavirus might be that it makes us more thankful for the good things uh, we have. It, It makes us more grateful for the food we have. So what might some of the other good things be to result from the coronavirus? Well, uh, we might pray for, pray more, we might pray more. Even if we're stuck at home, we can still pray, can't we? Uh, We might learn to trust God more as we learn that we really are dependent on God. We might learn to be more uh, loving and considerate towards other people. We might have the opportunity to share the hope we have in Christ with people who are worried and anxious. We might learn to value the things that are most important in life. And when confronted with our own mortality, we we may realize that that the most important thing of all is to get right with God by trusting and following his son, Jesus Christ, as our personal Lord and Savior. Now, I'm going to finish by saying this. If you come to God, admitting that you've disobeyed him, disobeyed his commands, and if you ask for his forgiveness, if you commit yourself to live in God's way, in obedience to the teachings of the Bible, if you trust God to forgive you your sins, not because you deserve it, but because you know that Jesus died to save you, then you can be sure that in all things, God works for your good. Because God works out everything for the good of those who love him. Let's pray. O Lord God, how good it is to know that you are in control and working out everything for the good of those who love you. Please help us and help all your people around the world to know you, love you, and trust you in these difficult times. Help us not to be anxious, but to have great confidence in you and your plan. Please continue to work in our lives as you have promised. Make us more like Jesus. And when the time is right... Take us to heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to spend some time now uh, praying. Uh, the prayers we are about to hear uh, were written uh, by Valentina. Let's pray.
As we come to our prayers, let us remember that we do not have to twist the arm of a reluctant God to seek good things for this world, nor find ways to persuade a distant God to come near and listen to us. Let us remember that as we pray, we kneel alongside Jesus Christ in the presence of God with the help of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for our mothers. We remember today their loving care and their ceaseless love for us. Make us grateful for their goodness and thankful for their care. May we show them with our gifts, our words and our actions that we love them and care about them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we are glad that the Bible story tells us a little about your family life and introduces us to Mary, your mother. She was happy when she knew she was to be a mother. She was pleased when people were glad to meet you. She was worried when you were lost and she went to look for you. She stayed by you when everyone else was against you. She shared your pain and suffering and she shared your triumph. In the love of our own mothers, we also have received this same care. We are better people because of all they have done for us. So we pray that the love they have shown us may also be shown by us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for doctors, nurses and medical researchers that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbor's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us say together the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Okay, let's stand and sing. We're going to sing, How Great Thou Art. Isn't our God great? So let's stand and sing with all our hearts as we sing this song.
Well, it's been great uh, being able to worship uh, together with you this morning. Uh, and the funny thing is, I'm going to be watching this at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning uh, with you, so we really will be worshipping uh, together at the same time. Now, assuming it, it all works out as planned, we're going to be back here at 10 o'clock uh, next Sunday. I really do hope uh, you will join us for the next service. In the meantime, uh, there's going to be all sorts of stuff uh, posted on uh, Facebook Uh, I hope you'll check that out and be encouraged by the things we put there. But it is time uh, for us to finish, and I'm going to finish uh, with a prayer. So let's let's bow our heads and pray. Loving Father, uh, we are thankful that wherever we meet, whenever we meet, and however we meet, you are God and you are good We are your people, so please bless us through these difficult days, weeks, and months. And you have promised that in all things you will work for the good of those who love you. So please, work in us and through us for our good and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He has redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord the Holy Spirit is among us. He will lead us in God's holy way. To God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we praise and glory today and forever. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.